Good morning. Thank you for being here today. I'm Amanda, founder and owner of Little Lotus Yoga. And as you may have seen this week, we are doing an array of Facebook Lives and sharing lots of information because it's Infertility Awareness Week in Canada. And I'm really excited to have Natasha from Babo Mia with us here this morning to talk to us about fertility journeys and using the support of a doula. So thanks for being here, Natasha. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about who you are and your company and what you do? Sure. So I am a co-owner of Babo Mia. We are a training organization. We're located in Toronto, but we train women globally who are working in the maternal health field. So one of our main components of our training is doulas. Um, but then we also tra train um, breastfeeding educators and sleep uh, sleep educators fitness instructors, um, all of those things. So um, we've been pretty busy over here. And uh, one of the big things that I like to do when we talk about doulas and working with maternal support is the effects that fertility and fertility struggles have on the rest of a woman's journey through pregnancy and birth and parenting. So we very rarely do a training where we don't have some element of the fertility issues in there because it really does impact. And with one in every six couples struggling with it, there's hardly a chance that as a doula or anyone working with new parents that you're not gonna stumble across a, a, a family or a couple or a woman who, who hasn't gone through infertility. So it's important for us to be aware of what's going on and how they're feeling. Absolutely. So can you explain to those who may not know what is a doula and what does a doula do or maybe don't, doesn't do? Right. So a doula is part of for it depends. There's a bunch of different types of doulas. Um, but the type of doula that I tend to be is a birth doula, which means we're emotional and physical and informational support for a woman, like leading up to her birth, going through her birth and the few hours after her birth. So we really are that continuous care. And that's the big like kind of key word for for people to know is we're continuous care through their pregnancy, through their birth, um, where they might have different nurses come in and out. They might not have their OB during the birth, but their doula is constant. Um, what we don't do is medical, anything medical. So we're not doing blood pressure checks. We're not doing cervical checks. We're not telling you if the baby's okay or not okay or anything like that. We really are trying to find all the information that a woman needs to make informed decision as they go into their birth. We're there to massage them. We're there to help them feel safe in birth, but we're not there to do anything medical. Um, a postpartum doula is, it, it's funny because I have this, <laughs> I have a best friend from the city. And it's so funny the way we talk about doulas, a lot of people still don't know what they are. And I remember my very best friend five years ago had a baby. Baby was eight months old or something like that. And she was like, I just wish there was someone that could come in and like just chat with me and be my friend and like help me with the baby and help me with some of the stuff around the house and just kind of like, you know, be my friend, but like help me with my questions and all that stuff. And I was like, you do know that's my job, right? Like that's what, <laughs> that's what I do. And she was like, no, I didn't know that that's what, what you did. But yeah, basically a postpartum doula is again, that continuous care but also helps you with all the questions you have when you're working with new babies, when you're, when you have a new baby, um, you know, you're trying to breastfeed, you're trying to bathe them. You're trying to, which uh, is a much better resource than Googling everything. Like, is this normal? Should I go back to the doctor for this? Or is this normal newborn behavior? And how do I bath my baby? And how am I supposed to swaddle my baby? And how much food, like how much milk should I be giving my baby? All that's those right great questions that as new moms we have. And I, you know, and making the assumption of someone who's been on their fertility journey, you have that, you know, that little bit more protection of it's taken so long and there's been so many bumps along the road to finally have your baby in your arms. You really want to make sure that you're doing everything how you should, should be or supposed to be doing. And so have that person to bounce ideas off, to have just as a support, to be sitting there saying, you know, you're doing a great job is, is an invaluable resource. 
I mean, that just saying that alone, you're doing a great job is like, ugh, right? Because I, I know you know this as well as I know this, have, being, being a mother, is that everybody and their dog comes out of the work to tell you how to parent. Yeah. And not always does that fit with how you want to do it, right? And the one of the main roles of a doula is to honor and protect the choices that parents make. So if you've decided to parent in a certain way and your mother-in-law doesn't like it or your sisters don't like it, um, but your doula says, you know what, you're doing a great job, you know, it allows you to follow your instinct and do what feels right for you. Um, so, yeah, especially with people who have gone through the infertility journey, um, there's so many ways that can go. You can, like, there is some research, not a lot of research, but around the idea of women who have struggled for a long time now having their baby and the increase in mood disorders and anxiety. So, you know, being anxious about all the different things that you're doing with your baby can be challenging. And just having somebody there being like, you got this, like you're doing so well. Um, really, it really makes a difference. Like, if anything I can say is that women who have, who struggled with infertility are going to need more support than others. Um, Cause they're going to be the first people that feel like they have to be happy regardless of what happens. You know, you know, they've got their baby. Now they need to just be quiet and be happy because they wanted this baby so bad and then they got their baby. So why would you be sad now? Or why would you be anxious? Or why would you be worried or feeling like I'm disconnected with my baby? This is something you wanted. So you should still have that feeling in the postpartum period, but that's not always the way it is. No, it's not the way at all. And I mean, I've been through it. I've been there. And so you know, I have my own experience and I don't want to put my experience on everybody else, but um, it's, it's just something that uh, is, is bound to happen is that you have this baby, you have this, this feeling like you have to be happy no matter what. And then when you're not happy, um, there's no one to talk to and you don't feel like you're allowed to say it. So they're going to be the, the women who feel more isolated. Um, and if they have a postpartum doula that understands that this is something that can happen, like it is okay for you to say this is hard. Um, it is okay to say you need help and that this isn't what you expected. Then she's going to have an easier time reaching out for the help that she's going to need. So um, what would be some of your advice for anyone who's watching or maybe watching later on the replay? You know, if they're noticing their friend or a family member, you know, they think they might be experiencing postpartum anxiety or depression what are some ways they can help support them? Yeah, so I think the, the education piece is key. So if you're, if you're a doula and you're a birth doula, you're lucky because you're kind of that first line of defense against this. Um, you know that they're at a higher risk. You know um, the signs and symptoms of postpartum depression and anxiety. Um, so you can start making that postpartum plan that sets their village up for them because that's what they're going to need. It's not, it's not going to be like they have the baby. Finally, they're happy. They're going to be okay in their room by themselves, stuck on the sofa, feeding, you know, 12 hours a day. For, yeah, 24 steps for, for the first four months. <laughs> no, that doesn't work for anyone, you know, <laughs> let alone people who aren't expecting that, that change in their life. And so making sure that the postpartum plan is all set up. It's locked and loaded. You've got your support, the people who are going to bring you food, the people who are going to come um, and allow you to say the, the things you don't want people to hear. Um, you know, making sure you have all that support and then making sure if they have a partner or a mother or a best friend um, that they know the signs and symptoms of postpartum depression and who to reach out to, where to reach out if these signs are coming up. Um, so yeah, definitely if, if you can get in there prenatally and set this up properly um, and letting her know that it is normal to not feel awesome, even if you waited for years, um, and that these are the people and places you can reach out to, then that's going to be a huge help. As a postpartum doula, of, 
of course, you're going in and you're you're monit not monitoring, but you're looking for those type of signs. Um, you're making sure the partner knows um, if they have a partner, you know what to look out for. So it really is the education piece. Um, I know I sent you the link to a blog post, and at the very bottom it says so. There's in this blog post there's five things that doulas need to know um, as they're caring for people who have undergone infertility and have become pregnant and, or have become parents. And there's a whole checklist of all the different signs and symptoms of postpartum depression and anxiety disorders at the bottom. And it's an amazing resource by a woman here in Toronto. Her name is Olivia Scobie. She has so many resources for postpartum depression and, and who to reach out to and where to get help. So I would highly recommend taking a look. We'll make, we'll make we'll sure. Make sure. That Perfect. Thank you. Amazing. So how can a doula support someone on their fertility journey, you know, once they become pregnant? Yes. Yeah. So um, once they become pregnant, I think the most important thing is that is to know that the stress levels um, and the anxiety and the depression that happens during a fertility journey, um, which many much, much research shows is that stress level is somewhere up in the same range as people who have cancer which is, that's big, right? And so a pregnancy test that comes out positive doesn't take away all of that, all of those feelings. They're not automatically gone. Um, it's not like so a light switch. switch of like, oh, I'm oh, pregnant, I'm everything else is, is gone. That's right. So it's important to, to know this because your clients moving through pregnancy have a higher risk of depression and anxiety and also they have a harder time can have a harder time i don't want to paint out like some women there is that switch and they're like finally i got what i wanted um and others don't they're kind of in this waste of not belonging to the infertility community anymore and not belonging to the pregnancy community yet and, and, and it's that isolation piece and that anxiety piece that they have to walk through their pregnancy with. They have a harder time connecting to their baby to trust that this baby is going to end in a birth with a live baby. They have, you know, all of those feelings come with it. Um, so and I see a lot, too, of women not sharing their pregnancy or celebrating their pregnancy until they're you know almost into the third trimester. You, you, you know, it, I mean, you know, you've been pregnant before, you know, those first three months, four months, five months, you feel awful, you feel terrible. Um, and if you can't tell people why, you know, there's that added piece of isolation of going through something so big and not being able to talk to people about it. Um, so, yeah, you you have clients. And if you're lucky enough to have clients this early on, um, just know that you might be you might be supporting them more than you're supporting someone who just got pregnant, you know, kind of on a Saturday night drinking wine. Um, <laughs> so um, it really is, you know, expect that there'll be more phone calls, expect that there'll be more um, more questions. Don't be alarmed by the fact that they're not connecting with their baby and aren't celebrating with baby showers. And, you know, this is a fairly common and normal thing um, that's happening with women who have undergone infertility. Like, you know, they don't want to get their hopes up. And so sometimes they're just not going to connect with the baby in the way that they want. Um, and as they move, and also imagine the amount of guilt you would feel too for wanting a baby so much and then you're pregnant and you can't connect. Um, that's also isolating and feels bad, especially like maybe your best friend is pregnant too and she's just over the moon and you're kind Which of- Which is really, really challenging, challenging with social media these, these days. Yeah. Everyone yeah. posting pictures and belly shots and I'm feeling great and I'm so excited and I'm expecting my baby and here's my baby shower and we're going on a baby moon. Oh, all this stuff, right? And you just wish you could do it. You just wish you could be so- so confident in in your body right and be so happy yeah. i mean you are happy you're a bunch of things um but i think fear can, can kind of take the wheel um and knowing and you're not alone right and that's one of the big things that doulas need to know too is that 
um, you are support for these women, but sometimes you can't be you can't be the only support. There needs to be other peers that are going through the same thing that they can talk to. So if you know anyone in your city, your town that are hosting, you know, birth after infertility groups or pregnancy after infertility groups, anything like that where they can connect with other people who are going through it um, is going to be an invaluable resource to them. So and if this is a topic that you love, you can you can create that in your community um, because <laughs> there's a good chance it doesn't exist. You know, absolutely. Yeah. So where can people find more information if they're interested in learning more about doulas or maybe are interested in becoming a doula um, themselves? How can they connect with you further? Yeah, absolutely. So we have our website. It's babelmia.com. So that's B-E-B-O-M-I-A dot com. Um, and there's, you know, we have our doula page there. You can look at all of the different information. Um, you know. It, we have, you know, what the outline of our course looks like. Our course is actually three months long um, and it's all online. So it makes it really easy for, for women who have young children to to learn without having to hire a babysitter or travel or, or anything like that. So Thursday nights we do a live class. It's very interactive. And then all week we kind of learn and research and chat with each other about what we're what we're learning. So we've got a full three months where we're together and then they kind of stay with us as they start their first birth and their second birth. And, you know, many of our doulas are really interested in the fertility piece. And so we do have a fertility piece to our doula training, which is very unique. It is very unique, which is amazing. It's an amazing yeah. resource. Yeah, I think it's well, I mean, because I had my own, my own issues, I think, and I was, I was actually a doula the whole time I was trying to conceive my daughter, which was four years. So I was, I was, you know, infertile. I don't like to use that word. Um, while I was attending deliveries and births and all this stuff. And, you know, while I love my job, um, I still found that very challenging to watch babies be born and, you know, all this thing. And it just needed to be part of the training. Like I wasn't willing to do a training without having that element, like people need to know, like if you, if you've got a one in six chance of a client coming to your door, that's been going through this. And that's uh, the people who are actually saying, you know, I'm dealing with infertility or they're reaching out for help. So, you know, imagine the amount of people who have just said, okay, it's not happening for me, or I don't have the resources to get the help on their fertility journey. You know, that really could be one in four, one in three. Yeah. Yeah. The ones that have have tried for I mean, there's no there's no um, there's no way to kind of distinguish who has a harder time going through infertility. Right. Somebody could go through for four years and then not bother them where someone could be trying for eight months, not be one of the statistics um, and have a very challenging time with that. So, you know, yeah, it could be one in four. Right. So you need to know you need to know what treatments they've they've been going through the impact it's had on their body um you know how how they feel going into birth like we all know how fear affects labor and delivery right so you need to know this stuff about your clients you need to understand and it's taken so i mean the body is so smart and it's taken so long to have this baby your body wants to just protect and so i'm sure it's very challenging when it comes time for birth when your body for so long in your mind has been saying hold on to this baby for dear life and keep them inside and safe to then understand and feel okay it's time to open up and relax and birth your baby there's been so much stress and anxiety of keeping that baby protected absolutely and you know you know as well as I do that in this society birth isn't looked upon as something that's safe you know I mean it is, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's not looked upon as safe. So you're going to notice that with your clients who have gone through infertility, they might be looking for other ways to give birth that, that are perceived to be safer to them. So in, inducing earlier or cesarean sections that are elective, those things are higher, um, not because of the need, not because you need it. Like a lot of people will say that you know, infertility clients are going to need a C-section. Um, but that's not true. The, the C-section rate is higher at the time when people are 
electively choosing, so at 38 weeks, um, where the C-section rate is more on average when you wait to 40 weeks, so the people who are waiting for a delivery to happen spontaneously. Um, so it's not necessarily that a woman who has gone through infertility needs a C-section because of the treatment. It's because we're doing it because of the fear, which is absolutely okay. I, like I said, we're doulas. We support the choices of our parents. But as, as doulas, you do need to be aware that this might be something your clients choose. And understanding where that fear comes from and making sure that they understand you know, all their choices and what may come along with their different choices and how the different scenarios may play out so they can make a real educated decision on their own without feeling like someone in the medical community is possibly telling them, this is what's safest for your baby, so that's what we're gonna do. Because I think when they're put in those situations, a lot of times we think, okay, that's what, that's what our doctor said to do, so they know best, that's what I'm going to do. But they haven't always been presented the full array of scenarios to let them make an educated choice on their own. Absolutely. That, that, and that's part of the thing we're there for is to help with that informational support. So if you have a, if you have a healthcare provider that tells you 50% of women who have IVF have a cesarean, you think it's, you would automatically think it's because of the treatments or because of, you know what I mean? Or the, the body, right. you know, we already have, a, you know, almost like you've been let down by your body already. So now you feel like, okay, well that must be true. When really, when you really look at the studies, that, that is not the case. So we are there to help present all the sides of the story, but we're and also I still there to, to support whatever choice they make. Um, but, and also what can we do during pregnancy to help with that fear? What is it that can we, we can be doing to help them with those feelings of fear and anxiety? Maybe we can lessen those fears as we have those nine months together or six months together, together. Like what can we be doing to help? Amazing. Mm -hmm. I cannot speak highly enough about doulas. My husband always tells people, you know, every time we've, I have, I have three little ones and every time I got pregnant, you know, he was just, he got the checkbook out and was like, just make sure there's going to be a doula there. <laughs> he tells all of his friends when we find out they're expecting, did you get a doula? And he explains what a doula is and why, why he felt it was very beneficial and important to have a doula there. So I think, you know, I think they're a great resource. And as you said earlier on, a lot of people in society still don't understand what a doula is and, and how valuable they can be along your journey to be there to support you and your partner because your doula is also there to help to help your partner as well so thank you so much for being here today natasha and i'm gonna pop the blog post into the comments and uh, you. your facebook page and website info as well so for those who are watching who'd like more information they can connect with you that way thank you thanks so much